Hello there guys, what is going on? Son of Chelsea back here again for another episode of Added Time, answering your questions that you kindly submitted on YouTube and on Twitter. But before we get into any of that, I want to ask you guys, if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Also hit that like button if you're enjoying the content because it helps out the channel as well. But let's get into your questions today. Firstly here with Asis who asks, what do you think of hudson Doy's development? Compare it with Mason Greenwood. I think it's very difficult to compare those two players. Um, as I'll explain, I think hudson Doy has suffered greatly with injuries in the past 12 months, whilst Mason Greenwood hasn't had that yet. And um, I think it's it's unfair to compare both players because it's not like... I've seen comparisons already because Mason Greenwood is doing incredibly well for Manchester United at the moment. Man United all round are doing brilliantly at the moment. And Mason Greenwood is profiting off of that. He's scoring some brilliant goals. Um, his stats are incredible at the moment, really, for, for such a young player. And that's uh, really exciting for Man United. And I think... Uh, worrying for other teams as well considering how good he could become in that uh, front three for Man United but hudson Adoy has been injured you know I think you have to look back I think it's fairer to look back at hudson Adoy, um at the back end of Sarri season when he was finally in the first team he was creating goals scoring goals looking good looking vibrant having a really positive influence at Chelsea and then he got that major injury which set him back he didn't have a pre-season under Frank Lampard this season uh didn't start a game I believe it was to like Grimsby in the League Cup in late September um and then got another injury post Christmas where he played a lot of games that's always going to set back players, any player in their career. And I think you have to be fair to Hudson Adoy and look at those injuries and look at the, the mental aspect of that, how difficult that can be for a young player. Um, the contract situation I've talked about, the Kylian Mbappe effect I've talked about as well with expectation on uh, young players and where people expect them to be early on in their careers. I'm sure Mason Greenwood will maybe have that in his career. You know, he may be an anomaly. He may do incredible things in the game, but he may have a drop in form. And I think you'll see similar things where Man United fans will turn run and go what's happened um but i think it's just being fair to young players and understanding the development of them and being patient with them hudson adoy um needs to get back on the pitch he needs regular minutes at chelsea and then you can look at him again and actually judge what he's doing he hasn't kicked a ball i believe since maybe february um which you know is unfair to compare with mason greenwood who's playing week in week out at the moment and is staying fit and fresh but especially next season on the right if willian leaves as well um i think he'll get more to game time and hopefully he'll finally have a full season where he's fit and ready to go and i think frank will call on him and i think he can still be a big player for chelsea so i, I wouldn't be too down on him and i think mason greenwood you know as well is a striker compared to a wide player so I think there's that to take into consideration as well. Bagger TV asks, do you think Frank pushed Kante too hard? Should he have been rested in the last match? Your thoughts on Declan Rice as a centre-back? Firstly, uh, Declan Rice, I gave my thoughts on him in Let's Talk Chelsea last week. So go and check that out. Um, if you haven't seen it, I think it would be a positive move. I, I wouldn't be too shocked if Chelsea went in for Declan Rice. I think um, it could be a stroke of genius, to be honest, if you were to bring in that player. Considering, I think, both aspects, I think there is an aura to Declan Rice and as well his passing ability. But on N'Golo Kante... I'm not entirely sure. I think that um, it's very easy in hindsight. In some ways, it is, you know, easy in hindsight because I think that, you know, if Kante didn't start on Saturday and then we got a negative result, there's always going to be those people turn around and go, why change it? Uh, why not play N'Golo Kante? I see a lot of those types of people who say, you know, Kante should be playing. And if Jorginho, say, started or Billy Gilmore started and we didn't have a good game, I think a lot of people would have turned around and pointed a finger at Frank and said in a big game, why aren't you playing your best players? I think Frank very much knew how big that game was. Chelsea knew how big that game was. So I would have started in Golo Kante. I just, I think he's been in brilliant form recently and he's coped pretty well. Um, of course, there is that other side to that argument where he has had a lot of injuries this season. There is a track record of him pulling up in games, having to come off early. Hopefully his injury isn't too serious. Let's hope we can get him back for the Sheffield United game. I'm pretty sure he's going to miss tomorrow's game against Crystal Palace. I'll be stunned if he's ready for that. But no, I don't think he pushed Kante too hard. I think he brought him back into the team. It was working. We were winning a lot of games already with him in, in the base of midfield. And I think, uh, as you saw on Saturday, once again, I think with what Frank's trying to do with that midfield, Kante is essential. So I think really as I'll probably talk about in my team selector for Watford, I think Chelsea are going to struggle because I don't think there are many players who can do what Kante does in the world of football, but also just what Frank wants from that deeper player at the moment. Um, so no, I don't think he pushed him too hard. Unfortunately, it's just a case where Kante's fitness this season has been an issue and let's hope it can improve and this injury is not as serious as first thought. El Chelsea asks if it actually went down to only one more transfer left to strengthen the squad, who would it be? Um, I've stuck to left back pretty much for months now that I think it's the most important position for Chelsea's strength. And so I would say that um, whether it is, you know, Ben Chilwell, Taglifico, Alex Tellez, um, who I think are the three main targets, that would be my position because I think 
once again seeing Rhys James at the weekend seeing how Chelsea can get creativity from those wide areas Rhys James crossing it in um, sort of drifting inwards I think Frank Lampard wants the acceleration there as well I mean look at the last goal against West Ham you know Marcus Alonso not being able to track back and I think that's what Frank France as well to have the safety um, that he knows that athletically a player in that left back position has the ability to really move forward assist the attack be creative be progressive but also have that agility to run back as well and help in defensive aspect as well because I think Frank wants Chelsea to be on the front foot so you're going to need players who can track back and be pacey and uh, I think Frank months ago was talking about sort of the definition for players he wants to bring into Chelsea and I think it was something along the lines of quick and athletic you know and you've seen that already you know Hakim Ziyech Timo Werner uh, Kai Havertz being linked you know Ben Chilwell it's these type of players he wants you know young and fresh players who can very much add to the pace of Chelsea's attack um, so that's that would be my position I think left back definitely I know people disagree centre back centre midfield um, but for me I think left back Callum Jack asks with the new additions and potentially more high tier players coming in how long do you think Frank gets until he has to win or at least challenge for the top trophies difficult to know because everything you've heard PR wise coming out from the club this year is is Chelsea wanting to give Frank Lampard the time to build this project but we do know Chelsea need Champions League football to be sustainable so in some ways this year was a free hit but really I, I mean I think it really wasn't I think the top objective still and, and has been top four which hopefully Chelsea can get because we know how essential it is to the club's finances Champions League qualification we need it and um, we can't really sustain being a top club without it really so there is pressure on that. I think next season, with the investment, the heavy investment Chelsea are now putting into the squad, I think there needs to be an improvement. I think there needs to be an ex expectation of improvement. Whether there's an expectation to win the Premier League or the Champions League, I don't think. St I think there still should at least be a realistic expectation and understanding of where Liverpool and Man City and how, and how long, especially on Liverpool's case, it took to uh, for Klopp to get his side to the top. I mean every side's different. Chelsea could be amazing next season and everything could click amazingly well. We could really push a title challenge. I, I think for me personally, just looking at next season, I want Chelsea to get out of the slump for Champions League qualification. I know it's very difficult at the moment in the Premier League, how competitive it is, but I just, I think that we've had three years now of Chelsea having to fight for Champions League qualification, being in that full spot or maybe into third, you know, I think as it was last season. I want to see Chelsea now push forward. Even if we can't sustain a title challenge for the majority of the season I don't want Chelsea going into the last 10 games worrying about Champions League qualification I want to be in a position maybe City are at the moment um, I know it's very different you know of course that's second place but where you know you've got Champions League qualification and then pushing forward maybe to next season and the third season I think based on the development of the side should be when Chelsea go and challenge especially the younger players in the squad developing getting better you'd hope by the first season Chelsea should be ready for a full title challenge Chris O'Flynn asks any ideas behind Tammy's dip in form since the restart it's tough really to know. I think in some sense, it'd be very easy to say Timo Werner coming in. That's put pressure on Tammy's shoulders. Um, he has been injured. You know, he didn't start a game uh, that start against Leicester. His last start for Chelsea was against Leicester away in the Premier League on, the, I believe it was like the 1st of February. That's how long it was. And he's had his ankle injury, which has really put him back a few months. Um, so I think you have to give consideration to that. I think Tammy, unfortunately, when he has got the starts, I just don't think has had the impact that Giroud has that presence. You know, Tammy earlier in the season, as well as scoring goals, being really mobile up top for Chelsea. I think the problem for me was just his link up play, I think is a little bit deteriorated for Chelsea. I think he really had a positive impact against Man City coming off the bench, but that was quite a crazy game. Um, I think that's something that Tammy needs to improve on and really get back to his best form. And at the moment, Giroud is clear as Chelsea's number one striker. You know, Chelsea have to be starting Olivier Giroud. There's no contest at the moment, which is a problem. Um, so hopefully Tammy will have that motivation to have a strong end to the season in the minutes he does get. I mean, if Drew keeps on scoring, Drew's going to keep on playing. It's pretty simple. Um, but I hope Tammy has that motivation to get back and score goals again because I think in, in Maine, he's had a really positive season for Chelsea. And hopefully as his fitness improves, as his confidence improves, gets that motivation back, he can get back to his top form. Sam asks, where do you envisage Kovacic fitting in if Lampard persists with two number eights? I think Kovacic can still fit in Chelsea's midfield. I've seen a lot of people dismiss players this season. It's seems to be a game by game thing at the moment and I think in some sense that's because we're not sure in certain areas where Lampard wants to take the team or what his best 11 is so I think naturally that happens but Ross Barkley for me is a prime example of ruling out players too early and saying I think a few months ago a lot of people just said Ross Barkley is not going to be a starter for Frank Lampard regularly 
he has been and he's benefiting off of that um i think kovacic the the ability of kovacic i think is so important in the modern game being able to carry the ball evade challenges i think kovacic's tackling ability is so underrated as well being able to dispossess players and bring the ball forward i think you saw that in the build up to the penalty against west ham how brilliant he can be Kovacic has still been Chelsea's probably most consistent player this season. I don't think people should underrate that. I still see people having a go at his stats in terms of goals and assists, but I still feel what he offers to Chelsea when you watch just by the naked eye. I think you see how important and vital he can be for Chelsea's build-up play and getting for a press. I think having that ability of a player like Kovacic I think is essential in a modern game and I remember the performance against Bayern Munich where most players underperformed that night uh, Kovacic very much held his own that night against Bayern Munich a very good Bayern Munich side so don't forget that I think Kovacic still even if it's not in the two number eights I think he could even fill that deeper role as well in terms of breaking up play um, so I think Kovacic still absolutely has a future at Chelsea Michael asks will Ziyech play as one of the attacking eights a lot um, I'm not entirely sure I don't think so I think with Kai Havertz and the Chelsea's pursuit of Kai Havertz, whether they get Kai Havertz or not, is a different matter. But I think that very much shows what Lampard maybe is trying to do. And I think Ziyech, for me, very much feels like he's going to be a right-sided player for Chelsea, the right side of some sort of front three for Chelsea. Um, I just naturally see that's where he'll probably fit in. I may be proven wrong, but I just get that sense with, with the way we're seeing the team mould now, Mason Mount. I think you could see a midfield three of Ingolo Kante, Mason Mount, Kai Havertz, other players and midfielders in there, and just trying to guess what Lampard's going for next season um of course if you know Havertz doesn't come in I think maybe Ziyech could revert to that role and Callum Hudson-Odoi potentially could play on the right if Willian stays another winger comes in you never know really it's, it's hard to tell but I I wouldn't say he's going to be naturally a number eight next season in my opinion Spark asks analysis of Chelsea's players on loan and how we can deal with them in the future mainly next season and rate their progress and potential I've done videos on sort of loan players I think in the past I think that um I think it's most most of the loan players at the moment I think will stay on loan next season I don't see a lot of them coming back into the first team squad I think you know the likes of uh, Conor Gallagher Mark Gurhi I think will still get extended loans elsewhere I just I just look at the current first team and I just don't see where they're going to get substantial minutes especially if you're bringing in once again a player like Kai Havertz I just don't see where Conor Gallagher fits in there personally for me Mark Gurhi I think similar it'd be probably beneficial for him to get another loan Ethan Ampadu has always been sort of that unknown quantity for me and he still is for me. I don't know if Frank Lampard sees him as a part of the first team squad next season. He didn't really get any minutes at Leipzig this year. Maybe Chelsea feel like because of that sort of scenario playing out the way it did and him not getting enough time at Leipzig, Chelsea may still feel send him out alone again somewhere else and hopefully he'll get minutes whether that's in the Premier League on the continent again I made a video on an article by Simon Johnson in The Athletic which really went in depth on how involved Chelsea are with these loan players and tracking where they are and trying to improve them based on what Lampard's doing in the first team which sounds very interesting very exciting um, we're just gonna have to wait and see really I think it, it's tough for me still to know a lot about what's going to be happening at Chelsea because we still don't know our best 11 and I think maybe when things are a little bit more settled hopefully next season we'll have a, a big a picture and, and a clearer picture on where the likes of Tino, Andrew, and for instance, and other players, young players coming up, uh, can fit into Lampard's squad. So it's still, it, I think it's up in the air, but I think Chelsea are doing a lot to track the progress of their young players. And lastly, Ethan asked, will Zuma get sold? I really hope not. I, I just think based on performances this season, the only reason I can think they could sell Zuma is because maybe they feel out of the current defenders, he's the one you're going to get the best fee for. Maybe if they're thinking of investing really heavily on defenders. I mean, if Declan Rice is considered as a centre back and Chelsea know that if West Ham stay up, that fee is going to rise a lot and it isn't going to be a cheap player to bring in. I've always said this and it's not me, you know, changing my opinion. I've always said, I think for a number of weeks now that I think that and months, that I think Zuma has been very underrated for Chelsea this year. Um, unfortunately, this season, Chelsea defensively haven't been solid. So it's very hard to gauge that. And, you know, Zuma has been part of bad defensive displays as sort of every defender has. I think Zuma at the moment, though, um, after his performance against Watford, he has to do it consistently but after his performance against Watford I think was very impressive adds that aerial dominance that Chelsea have lacked a lot of time so I think Zuma like a lot of the defenders I think are all vying for minutes at the moment and all vying to impress Lampard to say I can be one of these defenders um, Chelsea very much are on the market looking for new players um, so I think it's down to all those players to fight for those minutes and, and prove to Lampard they can be trusted in the long term and I think Zuma at the moment very much is at the top of that pecking order but I still thought uh, Zuma I just think it'd be a silly move to sell him because I think his form at the moment has actually been pretty impressive.
impressive. So that is it for this episode of Added Time. Thank you guys so much for submitting your questions. Sorry to those I couldn't get to this week, but of course next week, once again, through Twitter and through YouTube, be asking for your questions so you could submit them again. But thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. If you didn't enjoy it, hit that subscribe button and a notification bell so you never miss an upload. Follow me on Twitter at Sonny Chelsea. Have a great day and I'll see you again. Thank you.